Yo, welcome back guys. Right, today we're going to show you how to, we, me, I'm going to show you how that we sort of go and plan about doing a house rewire, pricing it, walking around. The lady has bought this place, it was a repossession, it's upside down, she's just started moving a bit of stuff and tidying. So we're going to walk around and discuss of what the future plans are going to be with the place, what we need to look out for, straight away how we're looking at cable zones, cable runs, how we're going to get certain cables to certain places, because that's a key thing about pricing is, you could say, oh, you want a socket over there, that's no problem. You come to it, you've got laminate floor and you've got RSJ in the middle, you can't get a cable across. The, the job that should take you, let's say, an hour has now taken you three and you're the one losing out of money because you've already agreed a price. So it's quite important to try and look for things that could be prevented through pricing or stuff that we can get around of uh, by doing things different ways, right? Run the floor, cables under this floor because it's a raised floor rather than going straight up and down. It will save you time and effort on full chases from top to ceiling when you can just come from underneath and up a foot chase rather than a two and a half, three meter chase. So this is a three bed uh, terrace house. The fuse board is currently under the stairs and you will recognize this from the board that I've just put a temporary board on because the old fuse board actually set on fire and was disconnected. I'll link the video in a card up here and below if you haven't seen that. So we've had to come and sort that out and put a temporary board on because there's other trades around here we need some power on. There's two big outbuildings going in the back garden that we need to plan for straight away how we're gonna get cables there. The fuse board is being moved upstairs into the small box bedroom, wall mounted. The reason it's going there is because that bedroom thing can be converted into a stairwell. Stairs is on the other side. Stairs will be going up to a loft conversion. So that bedroom has now become a landing. So it's easy access. If there's nothing tri anything trips, we don't have one under an old stark uh, staircase. And as well, if we're relocating, we can relocate boards, get them away from staircases because obviously it's a fire hazard. If there's a fire in there, people will be trapped upstairs. Boards go in there. So straight away, we need to get cables from here. The one main cable, obviously the feed from the cutout and the meter straight up to that other room. It's gonna be run internally in the fabric of the house. And I'm probably going for the first time in a long time gonna run 25 mil armored up to the back of the board. The different options, the different ways. You can run tails, you need to ICU protect them if it's within the fabric of the building. I'll try and slow down a bit, sorry. So lounge, five sockets. What we will do, obviously go around with a pen and paper when you're first quoting up, five double sockets, a rough location. You don't have to. I just say to the customer, around here is fine. It's, it'd be different if they wanted one socket here and it was a 10 meter lounge and they wanted one on the other side. Prices will vary because there's a lot more cable than just around here. Five cables, what we say to people when they do it, if the quote's accepted, just go around with a marker, pencil, whatever, do a double X where you want a double socket, and we will locate it around there best as possible. Five double sockets in here, one USB. There's gonna be four spotlights in here. The lady wants spotlights throughout. This wall here has been blocked up, so we need to start then thinking about light switch locations, but as it's pricing, it's not gonna change if it's there or it's there. So what I do is, Pendant plus one switch. No, so we do a pendant plus a one-way switch. One switch, one light pendant, and then on top we will put our spots on top. In here, this doorway's being blocked up, and the doorway here will be opened up. So this now will all become our kitchen. Ideally, we would like a kitchen plan, so we can work out appliances, maybe a kitchen schedule of specs, so we know if there's a 2.4 kilowatt oven or above to have its own designated circuit. Same with the big microwave grills now. It's quite common and quite nice to see an individual radial circuit ran to that because that will draw a lot of juice. Obviously, if you want to be putting a radial in, if you want to be putting a ring in, that will then vary on price for a bit more cable. Lots of things to think about in the kitchen, but make sure you've got enough sockets on top, enough sockets underneath the appliances. How are you going to run them? We'll probably run them straight down around the worktop hit area here, back up, because obviously this is now a doorway. Like I said earlier, with this house, it's all raised floors. So we can put a hatch in somewhere, bring the cable straight down from the fuse, which is gonna be here somewhere for downstairs sockets. We can then bring cables down here for around and in the kitchen and we can just chase upwards rather than doing full chases down. Ideally, when you start doing a rewire, it would be nice if the kitchen is out. When we do this, the kitchen is gonna be in, so the price will vary again because we will have to take our own kitchen cupboards off and uh, put them somewhere. Do you know what I mean? Normally, if you're doing a rewire, if it's an empty house, it's cheaper. If it's a full house, it's more expensive because you're going to spend a lot, a lot of time moving stuff around, so always take that into consideration. So outside, we want to make sure that we're taking out, I think I'm going to do a 16 mil cable twin through the floorboards. Either bring it down into the floor and hide it in the floor or leave it in the ceiling. This is having a big extension out the back as well for a conservatory slash orangery, I think it is, slash dining room. 
So we want to make sure that we're bringing cables where we can bring a socket cable feed and a line cable feed. Yes, that can be come from downstairs and downstairs lights, but different things to vary with and actually speak to the customer what would they prefer. Hallway, three pendants, uh, switch. Obviously, this will have a two-way with upstairs, so top and bottom will switch it. And on top of it, the landing, I'm going to do top and bottom switching as well. We're going to do an outside wall lantern with the PIR with an internal switch and a double socket. Going upstairs, landing, very simple. A couple of spotlights, two-way switch, uh, a double socket just for hoovering. Bathroom, the size is going to vary a little bit because this wall is actually being pushed into this bedroom by about three foot. Just create a bigger bathroom as a main bathroom. Electric shower, six mil cable, pull cord, wall extractor, four spots probably with two external switches, one for the light, one for the extractor. Going through to the bedrooms, I think there's three double sockets in that one. There's five double sockets because it's got office equipment as well in here with USBs. Four spots, four spots. We don't want it too bright because it's a bedroom, but we don't want it too dark. This is roughly where our fuse board is going to be going because in here there's going to be a staircase going up into the loft. So one socket, a couple of uh, spots and a switch. Obviously, then we can future-proof this as well, knowing there's going to be a loft conversion. We want to run a designated 2.5 socket mill cable upstairs for sockets, designated 1.5 mill cable for lighting, for lights upstairs. Really, that's about it, because the, share, the ensuite upstairs in the loft will be run off the boiler. And we always say to the option, which we spoke to the lady about this, she's definitely going to have one off the boiler. I would say I'd recommend you then have an electric shower. So if one or the other packs in, at least you're going to be able to have a shower and hot water from somewhere to clean yourself. So it's always a good little variant to give. Boiler is going down in the kitchen, so we make sure that's on our plans for a designate feed as well. Check for the water, check for the gas, check for the oil, anything you need to run a bonding cable to as well, where it's located. I've screwed myself a few times when I priced it thinking it's very close, but it actually from the board, it was directly the other side of the house. The gas meter was outside the front of the house and it was a very long and tedious run, a couple of hours worth of work where I really priced in for half an hour to 40 minutes. It was about a three hour job, which was then lost for my end. The garden is gonna have an office, an outhouse, a gym, whatever it's gonna be. We wanna make sure that we're gonna be running a big enough cable to feed to one, to have a fuse board, to then have enough juice to then feed to the other. It's pointless running two cables out there when we can do it all in one. Uh, other than that, I would say pricing wise, Figure out what you've got. You've either got it on your iPad, you've got it on your phone, you've got it on a piece of paper. Make a list of each room, what I do. Sorry, this is what happens when you're tall. And uh, write it all down room per room. How many sockets, how many switches, how many down lights. Obviously, we're going to have interlinked smoke alarms here as well. We're going to have a heat in the kitchen. We'll have a smoke alarm here in the hall. We'll have a smoke alarm on the landing. And then from the, that as well, when the loft conversion is done, we will then put another cable up and do another interlinked up in the loft. So we're covered for all zones and all areas. Other than that, from the top of my head, from just running around saying to the camera, there's not much more I can think about, but think for future expansion. And as well as, just hear me out here, if the fuse board is gonna be going on the first floor and there's a power cut, the reason it's going up there so it's more accessible, so it's low waist high, but let's say in a few years time when the customer is struggling up and down the stairs, there's a stair lift, which happens, but we would like a plug socket located close to the top or bottom for a motor to go up and down the stairs and even if there's a power cut these things are battery backup so you can still go up and down the stairs think about things outside the box a little bit i wouldn't say upsell i'm not trying to say push more sockets more money for you but give them options brush chrome finishes we have in white finishes pendants you can have what type of pendants are you going to have plastic ones do you want to supply your own light fittings if you want to supply your own light fittings fine but we need to know what they are are they just going to be a bar that's just screwed to the ceiling or is it going to be a chandelier with a thousand pieces that you want us to hang on because that then adds more time and more money either lost or earned so you need to keep an eye out for that um, but if not i'll meet you back in my house and i'll give you a very rough sketch of how i used to do things back in the day to price it up very simply point per point work out a rough price for you guys and sort of show you how i used to do it and in a future video i can show you how i do it now with like tradeify so i'll see you back at home okay so i'm home had some tea it's half seven, something like that. Uh, I'll just literally mock this up really quickly for you. So as a sort of rough guide, these aren't my exact prices, but it ain't a fire off, to be honest, of the best way. So like you say, you've got your tally chart, uh, which is fine. I was gonna get a pen. So with this, 
literally it's a very 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 simple way and basic way to do it if you're just trying to get into it and you want to figure out what's doing what let's say 27 sockets 27 times 65 single socket and i've done this a very rough sketch so we've got pendant with a one way one way switch done pendant with a two-way switch we're talking landing switch at the top switch at the bottom three-way switch which she will have for her landing there will be a switch at the bottom of the stairs at the middle of the stairs and then for the loft conversion as well a few spare outlet that could be for your extractor that could be for a heater that could be for several things six mil cooker point ten mil cooker point down light so that's per down light so we've already priced up our pendant and one-way switch because we need still need the cables in and then from that we just take add on additional cost of each down light so that's included materials and the down light itself uh, extractor plus core it out for like a wall extractor outside light plus switch 150 this is like say rough don't go exact measurements but this is a good mark to go off i would say for well, around my area smoke alarm so this is your uh, mains powered smoke alarms interlinked so it's a heat alarm as well normally we would fit two that includes fittings there's not much that's a very wrong price because that's obviously quite low uh, obviously a lot of people having a data points now uh, fuse board 600 pound bonding for gas and water there's loads of other things, like I said, that you could start pricing into it. But if you just tally down on the side, 27 double sockets, five single sockets, put on there your USB sockets, that's going to be a bit more because it's more cost. It's a very, very simple way. Just as you get to the end, you tot it up, there's your price. You could print a few of these off for board changes. You could print a few off for rewires, for brush socket outlets, white socket outlets. There's so many different variants where you can have. You obviously, I do a lot of this on Tradeify anyway, um, but... If you're starting bare basics and you want to sort of know how to price stuff, this is a very, very easy way to do it. Quite a few people do it on websites, so like change the light fitting over. You could easily have that down as a as a price point of it's thirty five pounds to change a pendant over. But if it's just that's just going to the job, taking it over, changing it over and coming back, let's say. But if there's two or more to be done in the same property, it wouldn't be the same amount for all of them because obviously the first one is paid for itself with driving there and then the extra ones are additional costs, but not as much because you're already there. There's so many ways to price it, so many people so do it so many different ways, but it's an easy way if you're starting up or you know, don't know where to turn, just use something like this. It's so easy, it's basic, but it gets the job done. It gets you pennies in your end of your pocket. The customer knows they're not getting ripped off when you've got a bit of a, a system to go to and you can easily show them off. When they want you to be like break down pricing, which I always say no. If someone wants a broken down price, not interested, thank you. That's not how I work. Um, but if you're happy to show it off to customers, you could just go, well, this is how I priced it and send it over. And then they can work out, actually, we want to drop the price down by three, 400 quid to our budget. We'll take off five, six double sockets. We don't need that many. Or we'll get rid of some down lights. Like they can quite easily see where the cost comes from. So I can do more breakdown videos of costing and pricing. I've got no issue telling any of you guys of how much any of my jobs cost, really. Most of the jobs I'm filming now, the bigger jobs are all from YouTube. The customers are happy. They've got us off YouTube. They're happy for us to talk about the job and film at the job. So I've got no issue with it at all. And at some point as well, I can run through all the YouTube stuff again if you want. But I do do this in depth with all the people in my membership in the WhatsApp group. You can phone me, you can text me, you can do whatever you want, especially in the WhatsApp group where it's a good community. If you want advice on YouTube, if you want advice on all the stuff behind me, of analytics, how much stuff costs, how long it takes, how to try and get some more views or thumbnails or titles, or you want to go a bit more in depth of pricing stuff and how to gain a little bit more work, hit the membership thing below, join up, say hello. And it's not just me talking to, it's uh, a good chunk of other people now that can all give just as much good advice as I can. So, um, yeah, if you like the video, hit the like, subscribe, all that jazz, and I'll see you on the next one.